So in this video, we'll do another example to kind of clarify the distinction between local maximums, local minimums, and global maximums and global minimums. Okay, so let's do an example of f of x equals x cubed minus x. So I think we might have done this or something similar in a previous video, or maybe we did this in the lecture. Uh, but we want to find the uh, local maxes, local mins, global maxes, and global mins on of this function on negative 1 to 1. Okay. So first step would be to find any critical points. Right. So if we look for some critical points, okay, we look for f prime of x, which is right by power rule 3x squared minus 1. We look for where this is equal to 0. Okay, so then that gives us 3x squared equals 1. x squared is 1 third. So x is equal to plus or minus the square root of a third. Right, so this is positive square root of 1 third, comma, negative square root of 1 third. So there's two critical points. Two critical points. Okay, so then... For these critical points, we need to figure out which one is a max and which one's a min, right? Determine whether, you know, or which is local max or min, or maybe they're neither, okay? So let's check the sign of that derivative, right? So let's make our table, f, f prime, and for convenience, I'll also include f double prime because this is also going to give us some useful information. And so then we have x, so f, f prime and x. So again, f of x was x cubed minus x. f prime of x, again, was 3x squared minus 1. And f double prime of x then would be 6x, right? So then let's look at this. So our critical points are x equals minus a third, sorry, square root of minus a third, minus square root of a third. Then over here we have, I apologize for my crude table at this point. Okay, so now I have enough rows. So then x equals plus root one third, and we'll need a column here. Okay, so this is x less than minus root one third, this is minus root one third is less than x, but x is still less than positive root one third. And then here x is bigger than plus root one third. Okay, so we said that this was a critical point, so that's where the derivative was zero. Derivative was zero here, All right? We know this is a critical point. Critical point, and we're trying to classify whether it's a local max or a local min, okay? So we check the sign of the derivative to the left and to the right, and that'll tell us whether our function's increasing or decreasing up to that point. Okay, so let's try x less than minus a third. Um, minus a third is, is somewhere between you know one and two. Uh, so square root of minus a third is, is somewhere less than minus one, but not that, sorry, bigger than minus one. So between minus one and zero somewhere. Um, so let's just try something way to the left of it. So let's try x equals minus 10, right? So f prime of x minus 10 would be 3 times 10 squared minus 1. So that would be like 3 times 100 minus 1 gives us 299. So it's a positive number. So it's positive here, which means that f is increasing there, right? Let's try something between the two critical points. Uh, the only number that I'm definitely sure is in between these two points would be x equals zero, right? So that would be f prime of zero would be three times zero squared minus one equals minus one, which is negative, right? So then the derivative would be negative between our two critical points, so it's decreasing there. And then to the right, let's try, you know, x equals plus 10, right? This is f prime of 10 is again gonna be three times 10 squared Right, so minus 10 squared is the same as 10 squared. So that gives us 2 to 9, which is positive. Right, so this is positive to the right here. Okay, so that means that we are increasing on the right. 
So we went increasing, flat, decreasing. So that means this is a local max. And we went decreasing to increasing. So this is a local min. Okay. So one of those critical points is max, one's a min. And that's often going to be the case, but not always. Where if you have a pair of them, then one will be a max, one will be a min. Uh, but depending on the function, you know, these functions can get pretty crazy. So that's not always going to be true. But the last thing I want to say is, if we look at this here, right? If we check the sign of the second derivative at the critical point, so we don't need to look at it here or here or here, but if we look just at the critical point, that'll tell us the concavity of the function at that point. And that will actually tell us it's a local max or min, and we won't even have to do this f prime check, right? So if we check the value of our second derivative at this point, right? So at x equals minus root one third, this is f double prime is six times minus root one third, which is negative, right? So this is negative here, which means we make this maybe in red. So we know that it's information about the second derivative. So this is a minus. So that means this is concave down, right? Which looks like a maximum, right? And then on the right here, right? F double prime is equal to six times positive root one third, which is going to be positive. Okay. Which means that this is concave up, right? So the concavity looks like that. And because we already know that we're looking at kind of the tips of these concave bowls, right? Because that second or the first derivative is zero, we know we're kind of at that minimum or maximum. So all we need to know is the direction that this bowl is pointing, right? Is it pointing up or is it pointing down? If it's pointing down, that means we're at a max. If it's pointing up, that means we're at a minimum. Okay, so we don't need to do all this. if we don't want to. Instead, we can use the second derivative test. Right, which basically says, uh, you know, f of x has a local max or min if, you know, f prime of x is equal to zero and f double prime of x at that point is positive, means function is concave up, which means this is a min, or second derivative is negative, which means it's a max, okay? The only time this doesn't work is when uh, you have the, one of those other critical points where it's not where the derivative is zero, but maybe the derivative doesn't exist there because then the second derivative probably doesn't exist either, right? If you don't have the first derivative of a point, you definitely don't have a second derivative of, at that point, right? So it doesn't work if second derivative does not exist or equals zero, right? So if it equals zero, it doesn't tell you if it's max or min tells you that you have kind of a critical point and an inflection point at the same place, right? So an example of this would be just x cubed, right? We look at this on its own. f prime of x is 3x squared, right? And then f double prime is 6x, right? So the critical point here, right? f prime of x is equal to 0 when x equals 0. And then we want to check, okay, let's check the sign of our second derivative. Well, f second derivative at that point is equal to zero. So second derivative test doesn't work. And in fact, if we look at the uh, function, right? If I were to actually plot this out, let me just switch over. Um, Right, if I'm actually going to plot this out, x cubed, right? At x equals zero, it has a flat slope, right? Tangent slope here is zero. However, it's neither a maximum or a minimum because it's increasing on the left and on the right. 
So it's in point of inflection because you see it's switching from concave down to concave up, but it's not a max or a min, okay? And in fact, the concavity at this point is zero because it's switching there, right? And so this is a, a kind of a, a strange case where uh, the first derivative is zero, however, it's not a maximum or a minimum. It's just somewhere right in the middle of the function, actually, the way it turns out, okay? Well, let's get back to our original example. Um, right, x cubed minus x on this small interval, minus one to one, okay? So back to our main example. Right, we said f of x equals x cubed minus x on the interval minus one x to one, right? We saw that f has a local max at, we calculate it has a local max according to the sign table at x equals minus root one third, right? That's where it went from increasing to decreasing. It's where the second derivative was negative, so it was concave down. It's where the first derivative was zero, right? So all these things added up together to tell us that it was a local maximum. So it's a local maximum at x equals minus root one third, and it had a local minimum at x equals positive root one third. Okay, so to find the global, right, to find the global, it's also known as the absolute, right, because the absolute biggest or absolute smallest. So find the global max and mins, We need to one compute f of x at these local extrema, and two compute f at the endpoints, and then compare. Okay, so we'll just pick out the biggest and smallest numbers there to tell us what the global maxes and global mins will be, okay? So let's do number one first, right? So one f of minus root one third, right? So that's minus root one third cubed minus root, sorry, minus, minus root of one third. Okay, so if I plug that into a calculator, should have done this ahead of time, but minus square root of one third cubed. Okay. Minus or plus square root of one third. I get about 0 0.385. Okay. And if I do the other one, right, f of positive root one third, right, so that's positive root one third cubed minus positive root one third, I end up getting um, negative 0 0.385, okay? So then I've done number one, I've computed f at these local extra, and, and note that this one we said was a local minimum, this was a local maximum, and the maximum is bigger than the minimum, which, which is to be expected. It's not always going to be the case. I mean, you could easily have something where you have a maximum like this, and then a minimum like that, right? And then here, max would be less than this minimum, right? But, you know, that's besides the point, okay? So now we have to check the endpoints. So f at minus 1. Right, well that's minus one cubed minus minus one, which is minus one plus one, which is zero. And f at the other endpoint, right, is one cubed minus one, which is also zero. Okay, so because we're comparing the uh, local max to these endpoint values, right, we just decide is the local max bigger or smaller than these endpoint values it ends up being bigger, so we'd say that that's the global max, right? So uh, negative root one third comma 0 0.385 is the global 
max of f. Okay, it's bigger than the endpoints. And then we check, okay, is the local min smaller than these endpoint values? In this case, it is. So we would say that uh, my plus root one third comma negative 0 0.385 is the global min of f. Okay. And then that would be it, right? This is the local max and local min, and it also happens to be the global max and the global min, right? So if we look over at the um, graph, x cubed minus x between minus one and one, right? So at minus one to one, that indeed is the maximum, and this is the minimum, right? But what happens if we look over a bigger interval, right? If I look, let's say on this interval, right? Now maybe I'm looking between minus two and two. Well, at, now let's do maybe one where I can grab it. Let's do it from this value here, right? So x equals minus 1.2 to x equals plus 1.2, right? Then we'd say, okay, actually, the endpoints would now be the maximum and the minimum values globally, right? Because it gets higher than this local max as we go out to that endpoint there, right? So if I change the interval that I'm looking over, I could actually change the global max and min of the value. I can't change the local mins and maxes because that's kind of a property of the function, but the global max or min depends on the interval that we're looking at as well as the function's behavior, right? So if I looked at, I was looking at, oh, let me switch back f of x equals x cubed minus x on negative 1.2 to 1.2, right? Oh, let me, right? So if I'm looking on a different interval, right? I still have the same local minimums, right? Same local properties, but I have new endpoints to check. Right, so if I looked at f of negative 1.2, right, that's negative 1.2 cubed minus negative 1.2, right, let me just quickly compute that. I get negative 0 0.528, and then I think at positive 1.2 I should get the mirror image of that, right, at positive 1.2, I get um, 1.2 cubed minus 1.2. To change that, yep, I get positive 0 0.528, right, so that was looking at that graph. So then I'd say, okay, well, compared to the locals, right? Right, compare with the local max and mins, which was uh, minus, sorry, plus root one third, minus 0 0.385, right? We'd say that this one is smaller, f of minus 1.2 smaller, right? So because that one's smaller, then that would be the global min. Even though that's not where the derivative is zero. It's just a smaller value overall at negative 1.2 comma negative 0 0.528, right? And then the same thing with the max, right? We compare this with the value of our local max. The local max was positive 0.385. So we'd say the global max, so compare, to local max, the global max would be at this new point, positive 1.2 comma 0 0.528, right? And that corresponds with the graph I was showing you, right? So if I looked over a bigger interval, now those local max and mins are smaller or bigger than the kind of endpoint values because they're kind of going off to infinity on um, either side, right? 
but sometimes the function doesn't go off to infinity and then you can still have um, a global max be a local max. Um, so in the case of, uh, if we go back to this graph here, right? So in this case here, x e to the minus x, this was a local max. And no matter what the interval is we look at, right? It's always the maximum value. So sometimes that can happen too. Um, so it's really just kind of checking these endpoints and checking the value of our local max and mins to kind of determine whether it's a global max or a global min, okay? And these global maximums and minimums are gonna be really important when you're thinking about kind of applied problems where you're asked to maximize a certain function that has to do with you know, some sort of chemical product or, or biological process where you're trying to find the maximum value of some function that means something, then you wanna check both these local maxes, local mins, and the endpoint values because that could also be your maximum, okay? So that's that for today.